Welcome to the PopGo Project Podcast, a platform for the discussion and discovery of arts and entertainment. We focus on highlighting people and events that add value to the world around us. Visit us on all social media platforms by searching The PopGo Project or visit our website at thepopgoproject.com. Welcome to the show and thank you so much for listening. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Keller's Garden Center and Landscaping Services. Contact Keller's today and get your yard cleaned up before that dirty old man winter comes. I hate to say it, but he's on his way. The mornings are cold. They're frigid. I don't like it. I'm turning the uh, the steering wheel warmer on. I'm, I'm putting the seat warmers on. It's, it's just miserable. But contact Keller's today. And if you're looking for snow removal, services during the winter months they can take care of that for you too do not break your back this winter and leave the heavy lifting to the professionals at keller's family owned and operated their team is looking forward to serving you keller's garden center and landscaping services located on kern street in exeter near blue ribbon dairy find them on social media to learn more Still haven't recorded? We're recording now. Got it. Now I'm leaving a meeting. All right. See you later. Yo, peace out. Thanks for coming. Yo, that shit was whack. Yo, your shit's lit. Yo, this shit was lit poorly. <laughs> now it's You're, whack. I'm going to get lit. Can we do that? Are you smoking a J? Mm-mm. Drinking I'm not good. A, at, I'm not good at that. Drinking hooch? Yeah, I'm drinking some beers on a Monday night. Drinking some beers, huh? Uh, You're de- degenerate. Like a fucking loser. Wait, what? Uh, can we curse? Yeah, it's the internet. Uh, you know, you know, you never know. Yeah, this is not PG. It's not PG right, thirteen. Well, I'll, I'll watch what I, I'll watch what I say. It's rated R. R, like a pirate. What's a yes. fi- what's a pirate's? Who's a who's a who's the pirate's favorite actor? Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, that's for Santa. Like Rumple Stillskin. Rumple or Rumble. No, that doesn't. <laughs> work. Um, yeah. Where's a <sighs> what's a pirate's favorite place to get roast beef? Okay. How you doing, uh, man? Arby's. There you go. Oh, look at us. <laughs> with uh, I got it. Cooking with kerosene. Neil Rubenstein. Rubenstein. How are you? Parched, baby. Arched. Have a drink. Arched. Drink some water. What's up? Has Central Pennsylvania? I'm not. I'm not in Central Pennsylvania. I'm more right. Northeast Pennsylvania. Northeast. Yeah. Uh, Where are you? Stroudsburg. Um, a little north Scranton. of that. Where is that south? Scranton. Yes. Scranton. Scranton. Wilkesbury. Scranton. Were you at the Great American Scranton Music Conference? That's where we met. That is where we met. Yeah, we met before. That's right. I was. I guess I was that forgettable. I have pictures. No, of this you know what it is. Um, I only remember people that are important. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And I was not one of them. <laughs> no, man. Oh, you. Uh, did you moderate? I was moderating. Yes, you moderated the thing. I moderated the shit out of it. Yo, you moderated the shit out of that, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was my first time doing it. Uh, obviously, you know, we have a mutual friend, uh, Joe Caviston, and we Joseph met. A. We met up. Caviston. We met up uh, on the hill at uh, the Circle Drive-in. The Circle and, Jerk. <laughs> circle Jerk Drive-in, in beautiful Dixon City, Pennsylvania. Dixon Cities. Dixon, right? I'm trying to find the picture of us to, to jog your memory. A picture of us with dicks in our cities. It's a couple of dicks. There's a lot of dicks in that city. There could be, yes. I mean, I went I, to uh, I went to a Five Guys right afterward. Did you? Yeah, that's good. There. What'd you get? Uh, I think I just got fries. I think I just I skipped a burger. No. I ate twenty dollars worth of French fries. I think I did. That's terrible. You went to Five uh, Five Guys and didn't get a burger. Yeah, sometimes I don't. I I take way too many photos of my my children. I'm still yeah. I'm still scrolling. You're a perv. 
My, no, my Yo, children. What's up with kids, man? People have kids. It's so weird. You can take photos of your own children. You can't take photos of other children. See this? There's me and you hanging that's, out. That's us. I'm wearing the same shirt. Are you really? Oh, no, shit. You are. Fuck. Do you have other shirts? No, just these, this one and oh. the playing dead one. See, I, were, I was wearing a shirt with my own face on it. Oh, that's why I didn't recognize you. I was looking at the shirt the whole time. Right, right. Because I, I look nothing like the face on the sh- my shirt. Oh, no. Not my face. But Neil. Is this the whole pod? This is it. We're done. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> no. That's so why I, I should keep going. No, keep... I, we, we met on the, the a hill in Scranton, in Dixon City, actually. Dicks uh-huh. in cities. And uh, That was a cool thing. That was a cool thing that Joe does. Yeah, it was my and, first uh, time being a part of it in the sense of like, you know, moderating it and meeting the, the panelists and, and kind of hearing, you know, the uh, the knowledge you guys uh, graced us with. And, and um, yeah. it was good. It was cool. It's just and, funny to like do that stuff because it's like. It, it, like I could you could say whatever you want to say, but it's like you just can fucking do the things. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like, and I, I don't know, like I'm a victim of my own thing too. Cause it's like, I love hearing people further along than me talk about the craft and talk about the art and the journey and all this stuff, but it all boils down to like, I don't fucking know you do it, you know? Right. And it's like, you know, and then they're like, Oh, well, how do you, how do you cultivate a scene? You're like, uh, I don't know. It just happened. Like we just did it. I don't know. <laughs> like fucking right. find cool, be around better people. But sometimes people need to hear that, you know, and it's, yeah. And you know, sometimes the answer is right in front of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I, I feel like you have a, a, a huge history. Um, yeah. and I, didn't get to, I didn't get to talk to you really at the, at the, uh, the event outside of, you know, trying to get answers out of you as the moderator for the, the event. But I feel like, what was the panel we did? It was like it's a bunch of stuff like marketing your band or building a scene or I forget. Yeah, you were you were as memorable as I was. Yeah, I was not memorable. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know, no, but I I, I I tell I always I don't know, I always tell kids just quit your job. Like whatever you're doing, stop yeah, doing it. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not gonna be happy. Yeah. Like if you can be happy, no, 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 that's I should stress that. If you can be happy doing like a regular thing then do that do not yeah do not not do that because that right. is but if you can't be happy in a regular job then fucking why are you doing it now yeah stop doing it but you've done you're a lot you've, you've done a lot i mean you're uh according to your website you're a comedian and contrarian oh, just according to the website i'm a comedian yeah <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to do too much research on you because I feel like I, I wanted to kind of like y- you can tell me better than I can, uh, you know, read, right? Uh, but no, you're a comedian, but I feel like before that you were um, really into uh, a, a music scene and, and kind of uh, did a lot with that. But uh, in addition to being a comedian, I think you also do uh, a million podcasts. Uh, I'm not no, sure when you no, find time to sleep. What happened? I'm not sure when you find time to sleep. If this no, is no, dude, I stopped doing all the podcast. Man, I was doing Did like, you? yeah, because like the man, no one cares, you know. And it's just like so frustrating to be like, I spent all this time doing this thing, and then like some girl like jiggles her boobs to a gunshot, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna watch this instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're an inspiration. I mean, that one going on almost two years now. This 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 episode is being recorded on uh, November 21st. It will probably be released early December, at which point I will be celebrating two years doing this show. Uh, two years. And yeah, it's, it takes a lot to get some traction, you know? And I don't have yeah. – I'm not funny. I don't have any kind of uh, history or clout or, or anything that you have. So I'm, I'm working with nothing. I've got probably five listeners, so I'm not even surprised you, you're doing this for me. Well, that's how desperate I am. Is that like you five? Yeah, you, I need those five. <laughs> Yo, give me those five. Oh, it's at near Ruin Scene on, yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, so you have these podcasts, and like, I think that the, the I, I listened to a little bit of uh, the one you did with uh, Caviston, and I hate saying his name because, like, he he claims that he doesn't listen to my podcast. 
and we all know that my podcast is his favorite podcast. He just won't admit it. Um, and that's why he listens to it. I, I say his name probably every episode for some reason or another. Uh, yeah, it's like real ego thing for him. Yeah, so it's just like he needs he needs to hear it. He needs so he can go, get through every day. Say and, my name. Yeah, and so he can be, you know, a loving husband and and good father. You know, he wants to make sure he he hears his name said. But he's got a, he's got a, two kids, one kid, just one kid. Yeah, it looks just like him. Does it really? Oh yeah. Yeah, he was walk. He was actually at the uh, the awards, or the Steamtown, or the Electric City Music Conference, and uh, I said, "I don't know. I'm not that smart, but I'm pretty sure that's a Caviston." He's Poor a cute little kid. girl looks like him. Sucks. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, like you've you've done some shit, and I want to hear about it. Uh, and I, I, I want to, and I want to hear what you're doing now. Like, I want to, I want to hear how it all happened. Yeah, I don't know, man. It was like an accident. Um, the first, so like, I remember, like, I was like really young. I forget how old I was, but um, Motley Crue was on like the cover of like Kerrang! magazine or something, or Circus, maybe Circus magazine. And it was like they had fuck, they had full sleeves and they looked badass and they were just like so cool looking. And, uh, you know, they're talking about drugs and sex and you know like just uh, bullshit just something about it i was like yo i want to do all that like that's like that was it i was like i just want to do that why wouldn't you forever yeah and then you know you form like some opinions and stuff and you get your like you get your little ideologies and things you will and won't do and then, but in the back of your head, you still want to be like the cool rock star guy, right? So like, I would go out with bands, but I would go like my bands would be like punk rock or hardcore bands, like not quite, you know, not quite the debauchery that you you dreamt of as a kid. Um, but we got, you know, we got there. Uh, we got to the debaucherous point eventually. But um, yeah, I just wanted to be on tour with rock bands and stuff. And so I did it. I just started touring with friends. The friends got famous and just kept going out. And then I... Uh, and who were they? What bands were those? Uh, like um, a band called Rival Schools, a band called Motion City Soundtrack, and a band called Taking Back Sunday. A uh, little, Yeah, just some small bands. You know, I don't know. You know, I don't know who knows who whom are. Um, but yeah, you know, they all got... A little bit of level of success and so i had like a little bit of uh you know i had a good time and uh i like i like stumbled like ass backwards into like this like tv gig for spike tv okay and uh it's because like so like while on tour i like learned to play cards i learned to play poker and uh that was like blowing up poker was blown up okay so when i came home from tour me and a buddy started like an illegal poker room on long island and uh then my buddy was uh introduced me to a guy who was uh casting for a show for spike tv where they taught celebrities how to play cards and they needed like a dealer instructor expert guy and they're like talk to neil and it just i was like all right i'll do it and it like lasted like four years it was like it just kept going what was that called it was called casino cinema there's very few remnants of it on the internet it was like just before youtube got uh really cranking so there was no like there was like one or two digital things and those are the only things you're going to find, really. There's some clips here and there and some photos here and there. And there was a really fun one. Someone put together a uh, like a fake behind the music about what a piece of shit Scott Stapp is. What? And uh, they use like all footage from our episode with Scott Stapp where he's like, I feel like I remember that. Yeah, he's just being gross. Yeah. 
Was that, that the one where he was eating a cheeseburger? Was that him or is that? Know. He was, was eating. There's a different. I think that's the same thing, but that wasn't our. Like that footage wasn't from us. Oh, okay. Our footage. He's like trash talking Howard Stern to Howard Stern's wife. Nice. And like he's like, uh, I tell my kids. I tell my kids they came from my balls. And it's like, <laughs> what are you doing, dude? And uh, yeah, it was like real brutal. But um, that was a fun one. But yeah, so I did that for a while. And then. Uh, it became. Uh, oh, sorry. It became a thing. Like, I just I wanted I, like, that's what I wanted to do that. Like, and I wasn't going to do more. I wasn't going to get that role like that positioning and that was like a fluke so i just like started doing stand-up and writing and uh yeah here we are uh 2023 and according to your website you're a comedian i'm a comedian yeah That's so it. It, i feel like what it sounds like anyways is like everything was everything that you've done has just been by accident <laughs> what was that I said everything you've done is just by accident. I wanted to go this, and it happened, and uh, I fell ass backwards into a TV show, and, and I'm, now, I'm a, now I'm a comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you worked for nothing, no, nothing. It just kind of happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're so modest. Really, yeah, the opposite, really. I, I sacrifice everything. I work my ass off. But yeah, man, I just I, I, I don't want to do other stuff. Like I don't want to. I, I never wanted to work. Like uh, I, I, I never could picture it. You know, like I'd rather I'd rather own nothing and 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 you know be content, be happy and, yeah. and get to like I'd cheer people up every day. I just I put people in better moods, you know, and it's just like it's so fucking fun. Like you just meet people and cheer them up. Oh, it's great. Strangers, great, feels great, you know. And it's just I don't know, that's all I want to do. Well, I mean, I feel like it's hard for someone to become a comedian overnight. I mean, is that just a thought you had one day? You're like, I want to be a comedian, and and so it started on that TV show. Uh, uh, you got, you know, who Artie Lang is, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, of so Ar- Artie Lang was a, a frequent guest, and uh, he came on one day, and he was like, uh, he was like, oh, "That was a pretty good gig, man. He's still here, four years. Like, way to go." He's like. He's like, you want to like keep doing stuff like this, you know? And I was like, yeah, you know, it'd be fun. And he, uh, I just, he said, uh, shit ends, kid. That was the quote. <laughs> shit ends, kid. And he's like, this is gonna end one day. He's like, you want to keep doing it? You got to like learn to write, or or be a stand up, you know? And I was like, all right, I guess. And like, I just took life advice from fucking Artie Lang <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, I mean, there could be worse people, I guess, right? I I don't know. I don't think there could be. I don't think there could be. Maybe not. Because, I mean, life, yeah, it's been hard. (laughs) Yeah. But I I don't know. I'm I'm happier now than I've ever been, like, just getting to, like, just getting to, like, tell jokes and, you know, just, like, that's all I do all day is just, like, break down stuff and make it, try and make it funny, you know, like, you know traumas or or ordinary shit or you know trips to the doctor like what's funny about this and it's like well i can find something i can find something yeah so it's fun it's fun to do and where are you right right now like where do you where do you call i am in uh the room that i rent in oklahoma city oh damn okay i don't uh i don't even have like draws like i like i live out of a suitcase like even when i'm home that's sweet. <laughs> you can see some clothes on the shelves behind me, but my my suitcase is right there. <laughs> so do you post up there so, so you have easy access to other other places to perform? Or, or yeah, yeah. Work? Well, it's, it, yeah, it's cheap to be here, so I can like leave my shit here. It's cheap, and then also, yeah, like I can get anywhere like pretty quickly. So, um, you know, we're two hours from Dallas, two hours from Wichita, four hours from Kansas, two hours from Tulsa. Eight hours to Denver, eight hours to Albuquerque, uh, five hours to Austin, six hours to Houston, uh, nine hours to Nashville, Louisville, 
Indianapolis is 10 hours. St. Louis is seven hours. Chicago is probably like 10 or 12 hours. So like anywhere I need to be, I can be quickly. So yeah, that's, that was a huge part of it. And also the, I mean, there's only one comedy club here now, but when I moved here, there were two and they were both chains and uh, one, I was already past that. So that's four weeks of work a year. And then the other one's six or seven clubs. So I was like, if I can get past at that club, then that's, that's 11 weeks of work a year. Just, just with that, you right. know, that's, that's, you know, that's 20, 25% of my workload is right there. So sure. It's a huge so the strategy behind it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot that's of smart, lot. smart. What are some of the uh, notable clubs that you've performed in? Notable? Yeah. I mean, you know, the Funny Bones and the Bricktown and uh, Tacoma and Spokane and um, McCurdy's in Sarasota. Wisecrackers is one of my favorite uh, by you guys. That's one of your favorites? Yeah. I, yeah. The, it's just the the people that run that room. Uh, the Bruce family, just like, I, I mean, so you've performed like, here in Wilkesbury at, yeah, yeah. at Wisecrackers at the casino. Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be was... back. Uh, I'll be back March end of March. Really? Yeah. I need to go to that show. Yeah, come hang for sure. Um, and that's my dude too. Like the dude that books that room is like the coolest dude. Like we go to rock concerts and stuff together. Like really, he's just like a cool kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his whole family is sweethearts. Like it's just, and the more I go there, the more people like fill that circle. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, uh, there's a young lady there, th- this girl Becca, who like is a fan of like Taking Back Sunday and those bands. And like her and her dad started coming to see me, and so like, like, like so now like the post show hang there is like, knit like the dude who runs it, whoever's with me, the other comic. Becca, her dad, like whoever's with her, like, and then, you know, just like other like local people, like it's growing fun. It's fun. It's just a fun. Yeah. I like that room. It's a fun room. I was there once and I I feel like it was a long time ago. This is probably shit. I can't remember. Maybe five, six, seven years ago. Um, And I wish we had more clubs, but I guess really in in a small area like ours, like, I guess you don't need too many. But uh, I should give it another chance. Not that yeah. I didn't like it. Not that I didn't have a good time. It just, I almost forget that it's there and that it exists, which is unfortunate. So I don't know I if think that's, that's, that's their, that's a big problem for them is like. Yeah. And not to say like, I'm not their demo because I definitely am. I love comedy. I, I love, I, mean, I, I wish there was, you know, like I said, more clubs and more uh, opportunities to, to see comedy. And, um, I'd like to think that I have an idea of what's going on. I've been in the media for almost 18 years now. So like I remember when Wisecrackers was actually uh, across the street from my office when I worked at the Weekender, which was uh, an entertainment weekly publication back when print was actually a thing. Um, and I don't know if it was the same family that owned it or not. But uh, then that- I- What's that? I think it was them forever. I think it's like it's been that family. Yeah, so I guess they you know they moved up to the casino when that opened up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, maybe I need to subscribe to you know their channels on social media and maybe uh, the casino email list or something. I don't know, but yeah, I don't I, know if the casino. I think like the casino is kind of shitty to them, and like maybe they don't promote. Really, I think. But yeah, follow them on Instagram, and they'll you know see what's going on there. Yeah, that's un- it's, yeah, that's weird. Uh, Wisecrackers. Is it just the one location they have, right? Now, yeah. I think. yeah. Oh, you know what? They might have like an old timer thing and like um like some Poconos champagne lounge kind of thing. Like some like like old like stocky kind of you know what I'm talking about? Like just like Yeah. Oh, here it is. Wisecrackers Comedy Club. 1280 Highway 315, Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, followed by Get ready for it. Neil Rubenstein. Now it's followed by John Popko and the Popko Project. There's a lot of stuff here. And I had no idea that you performed there. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I love that place. Huh. 
I need to. They need to start promoting more. They only have 800 fans or followers on on Instagram. Wisecrackers, let's go. I know yeah, a great podcast. Some, I know a great podcast. Let them know. Yeah, they could definitely uh, benefit from advertising on the podcast, right? It's a five list. Five more, right? Five, five more <laughs> listeners. <laughs> That's wild. I, I was not expecting you to to say that one of your favorites was uh, a place in my hometown. That's cool. Yeah, man. I like small. I like small cities too. Like you know, I went from New York City to Oklahoma City. You know, like I like. I like a small town. Yeah, it's know? probably a nice, intimate, like uh, you know, venue too, right? Uh, it's like a it's like a hotel ballroom kind of vibe. Right, so but I'm like, saying like in general, like the places yeah. you prefer. Oh, like in the yeah, just being in the town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll cool. go to like what's that? Oh, what's the hell is the name of that diner right there? Uh it's like a diner, it's like above a nightclub. Do you know what I'm talking about? Eddie's? It was it was Eddie's. In in Wilkesbury? Yeah. Yeah, it was Eddie's. Now it's um Flows. Well, Lispy's Lounge is the Yeah, what's the upstairs? What's the yeah. Ah oh, shit! Uh, it it doesn't matter. That was, diner though, that's the fucking that's the vibe right there. Yeah. That it was it was Eddie's place for the longest time, and then like I want to say like Tony D's or D's Diner or something like that. Yeah, maybe Sophie D. Maybe I don't know. Like that? I don't know, but yeah, it's it's that's the vibe right there. Is like you know, get like a uh, a big big platter of like corned beef hash and eggs, and it's like six. 65 cents and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> not now not now i was just bitching on facebook that i just paid a two dollars and fifty cents for a head of lettuce Ugh. and i don't like that, I don't like that. And people are like commenting where are you shopping at where the, where, are you, where the hell are you shopping at i'm like i'm not making it up i go to weiss weiss markets 250 ahead it's not right i got people popping off saying oh you got to make sure you're punching the code because not all Heads of lettuce are the same. I'm like, I'm not an idiot. I used to work in a produce department. A head of lettuce, it's per head. It's not per pound. It's not cabbage. Cabbage. Cabbage is per pound. There you go. It's, uh, yeah. It's not right that everything, everything but wages go up. Yeah, it's wild. That's a, that's a whole other thing. You know? Yeah, we can, we can spend a day talking about that, but no, who, that's boring shit. I want to talk about you, your life, your your comedy. Um, yeah. What's <laughs> you're very you're very modest, I guess you could say. I mean, like I don't know because it's like it's just funny to me because it's like you know, like I, I like I haven't gotten I haven't done nothing yet. Like I'm like yeah, but um, you've done so much or so much more than a lot of people have. Like you've you've seen more of the world than one person would see in their entire. Let's say they, they live for a hundred years. You've seen more in a year, probably, than they than they'll see in their entire lifetime. And like, you you kind of pass over these bands like it's no big deal, like Motion City Soundtrack and and Taking Back Sunday, like oh no big deal. Um, and then you're like, you know what? Fuck this! I don't want to do this anymore. I, I want to be a comedian. And then you just go do it. Yeah, like, well, it wasn't really. I mean, it wasn't like that. But well, I mean, you know, you made it, it seem like that. Is what I'm saying. No, yeah, okay, maybe, but it wasn't. It was just like. <laughs> Cause we're not gonna be like, I don't know. What do you? Cause you know, like it's the perception. So like for me, it's like, oh, like I live alone. I have no assets. I can't afford anything. You know, like to someone else, it's like, oh, you have two gold records and a thing. You know, it's like, well, yeah, well, it's like, I don't know. You're looking at something like, I don't know. You have a kid. You know what I mean? Like that's a accomplishment. I've got two. Yeah, like that's like. I'll never have that, you know, right. and not that I'm saying I want or whatever, but it's always like, you know, it's like grass is greener kind of situation. I understand. You know? no, like no, I sure. chose to make the sacrifices I made so I could pr- pursue the things that I pursue. And then other people make the sacrifices they make to have the things that they, they want. I don't, I don't sure. know. I just, I don't. Well, maybe it's one of those things that like people like want when they don't have. Uh, I mean, yeah, no. I don't, I'm not I don't saying because I don't I don't want right. I'm not saying that you want that, but it's like people who like. I understand. Maybe that's not the right form to say it, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, 
it's cool. Like it's cool when people are interested, when people take interest and uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get lost on me when it, when so, you know, like, Oh, like you get to see the countryside or you get to, you know, meet new people or hang out with these people or, you know what I mean? Like I spent three months at rock concerts, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's fucking, yeah, that's cool, man. Like, yeah. And 60 year old me and old ass me, we both think that's fucking cool. We're both super amped, you know? And it's like, it's easy to get up in the morning when it's like, oh, I'm going to, I know when I wake up, I'm going to be surrounded by like seven of the coolest people I've ever met. And we're going to fucking walk around St. Louis getting tacos and then, you know, go fucking rock a concert. Like, yeah, it's it's easy. Like, it's easy to fucking. A life of freedom. Yeah. But like getting to that point is excruciating. Sure. You know, like, like, you know, I I always get a kick out of that too when people are like, I was just talking about this. I was just talking about this where I'll like, I'll meet someone and they'll be like, oh, you're a comedian. Uh, I've always thought about doing that. My my friends think I'm funny. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I guess I've thought about being a principal of a high school too. (laughs) Like, because, you know, my friends said it's cool that I don't beat their kids. Uh, Like, I guess that's, right? That's like the main thing you have to have to be a principal is to like not beat kids. So I can, I can probably do your job. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just like, it's like, don't reduce, like, uh, you know, it's also fucking 10 years of sacrifice and hard work and like, right. you know, losing relationships and, and, you know, like having to figure out where, you know, money's coming from to like succeed at something. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. And they like, and they just reduce it to this like nothing. And it's like, I'm trying to make your fucking job at Waffle House sound interesting, and you're like, totally degrading my job. You know, like, mm-hmm. all right, dick. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like they don't do that to anybody else. No one's like, oh, you're a doctor. I thought I should be a doctor. My friends have a steady hand. Like, what? <laughs> all right, I guess I give you a doctor. Right. I know, whatever. I understand. I used, yeah. to have a joke. I used to have a joke, and it's not a joke, and it's not funny. I'm gonna say it, and uh, I don't think my, I don't think my five listeners will care. I had a joke saying like, if you're in the school system, there's one thing and one thing only that you can't do. Like it, it, it supersedes striking a child, and it's you can't fuck the kids. You can't do it. Can't fuck your kids. Can't fuck the kids. Can't fuck the kids. It's like one, <laughs> one thing you can't do. Like yeah. just can't do yeah. it. And, and there's people who do, and it's fucking crazy, or try yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. It's scary. Well, that's the right. That's the Louis C.K. bit. Is uh, it must be really good, you know? <laughs> like people, people know they're not supposed to do it, and they're gonna get in so much trouble. Yet, like, they're like, ah, but it's so worth it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if you're a religious man, and regardless if you are or not, there's a, you can you know go to the books and it's, I mean, we started from that, you know, we had the, uh, you know, Adam and Eve and, you know, from day one, we, we just couldn't uh, ignore the temptation. Yeah. I get it. I, that's an interesting thing too, is like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not interested in children at all, but that's good. like, like when I, when I think about like, when I think about like some of the beauty standards in America, it's like, Oh, that's like, that's cause you like children. You fucking gross. You know what I mean? Like, like when people are into like wafy women, like small women, it's like, Oh dude, like it's, it's like a, it's like a child placebo for you. You fucking creep. You know? (laughs) Like, I don't know. I get grossed out by that stuff. I just, I just think people like, like it's a vicious cycle. I think that happens where, you know, you're brought up into that type of lifestyle and those things, and you probably were touched inappropriately, and and it just kind of like you you keep that that circle uh, closed, and it just keeps happening. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. You mentioned Louis C.K. Like, 
uh, who are some of your, uh, some of your inspirations? Who, who, who would you like love to like, you know, open for one day, or, I mean, have you opened for anyone like of, of that caliber? The, 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 the dream, like the apex, the, yeah. the Sarah Silverman. Like I just, I just watched a movie with her in it last night. What movie? It was called I Smile Back. Okay. It was awesome. It was excellent. It was good. Is it newer? It was actually from 2015. Okay. Yeah. I uh I'm not like um uh, not like a huge uh like I don't I don't know I, I don't even know if I can name like three movies she's been in, but I'm a huge fan of her stand up sure. and obviously like her show and like well her two shows and then her like being on Mr. Show and like those kinds of things, like any comedy related stuff. But her stand up like speck of dust the 2017 netflix special she did is like uh, it's like the greatest fucking thing in the world to me let's like, check that out it's just so good that's the check one it. man to me uh, sarah silverman yeah speck of dust speck of dust it's just so fucking br- it's so killer dude and she's just like she tackles any subject. She she makes everything uh, she makes everything funny. She's uh, it seems effortless. She um, she's in the room with you. Like she's not like it's not a rehearsed thing. It doesn't feel rehearsed. It doesn't feel scripted. It feels very what she's thinking about now and like her mannerisms and her delivery and her structure and yeah just every time i watch her i like learn from her um and then i guess like another like it's hard because like you know if i were to put together a top 10 list he might not even make the top 10 list but someone i learn from every time i watch and every time they release a new special is ari shafir yeah like he just gets he just gets so much meat off of every bone like um uh like really just squeezes all the juice out of every every fruit just fucking and it's just crazy it's like he did this thing called double negative a few years back and uh it was like two 45 minute specials back to back and the the one of them goes in tight one of them was uh he just he started by saying like my best friend got or a friend of mine got pregnant off a tinder date and he just keeps coming back to that topic 45 minutes just focused around that topic so like he's my friend got you know pregnant off a tinder date and then he talked about like how that even happens and then eight minutes later he talks about uh, you know the repercussions of that. And then eight minutes later is like one perspective of it. And then eight minutes later is another perspective of it. And it's just like this, such a, it's so wonderful. Like, and, and, and it's just such wonderful craftsmanship that he just like, he's able to just like constantly go back to this thesis statement and really just milk it for all it, all it's worth. And then, and then the newest special is called Jew. Jew, yeah. and it's just, I mean, it's an hour and a half, I think. I haven't watched it. And it's it just yet. about Judaism. It's about him struggling with Judaism. And it's just like how he got this much material out of it. Like just kept going back and kept going back and digging and digging and digging. And it's just like, it's outrageous. It's just like, it's such a, just to watch the craftsmanship is just like, what the f- I wish I had that. I wish I had that ability, you know? Well, I'm sure like, like any craft, I'm sure you can work at it. And I, I mean, I heard, <clears throat> um, you know, he worked on that for like I think two or three years, maybe just two years, but he was working on that for a long time. I think he put it, he shelved it for a minute. And then his friends were saying like, dude, you gotta, you gotta do this. <clears throat> and it's wild too. Cause he put it on YouTube. You know, he had yeah. no, no uh, streaming 
uh, giant behind him, no Netflix and shit like that. And mm-hmm. I think it took a, a page out of uh, Andrew yeah, Schultz's Schultz. book. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Joe Rogan, I'm a huge fan of Joe Rogan as a podcaster and um, I love his comedy. I didn't like his, his early stuff, but his last two specials have been excellent. Um, <clears throat> he uh, there was that one triggered. Triggered, yep. And strange. Triggered times. was real good. Yeah. Triggered was. Re- I'm not a Rogan guy at all, but Triggered was real good. Yeah. Uh, but they were saying, you know, he, it's some of the best stuff he's ever. Uh, and and well, Joe Rogan was talking about doing his stuff, his next one on, on YouTube as well. Uh, so it's kind of neat to have like these. I mean, the, the world has changed so much. I mean, <clears throat> you keep calling yourself old, so I'm not going to offend you by saying um, you are old. I'm not saying you are old. I'm just saying you've you've been around it. You've seen, you know, the pre-internet days, and you know now with the internet and you know the the early uh, years of YouTube, and you know compared to where it is today and the power that it, it that it you know has, and um, I feel like you kind of utilized YouTube and and your socials as a kind of a uh, a catapult, so to speak, to, uh, you know, what you're doing. I mean, I, not nearly as well as other people, but yeah, I've tried, you know. Uh, the, the algorithm doesn't favor me, so. Why not? I, you know, I try, but. Hmm? Why not? I don't know. Uh I had some success early on on TikTok, and then now, I mean, the past six months, I haven't had one video go over a thousand. And it's like, I, I mean, it's not that they're not good videos because they'll do really well on other platforms, you know. So it's like, all right, I just, you just don't like me over there anymore. So I mean, TikTok is Chinese spyware, so maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. No, no I'm fine with it. But it is like it just sucks because that's like a thing that like people want to hear about. People want to know what your numbers are over there, and it's like I don't know, fucking two hundred. Yeah, <laughs> like I get two hundred views. Does that play but into like, getting like getting booked for shows? Or I mean, not as much as not as much as maybe it used to. Like for a while, it was like, well, what are your so you like? You know what? What do you want on Instagram? If you're not over a certain level, it doesn't matter. But now I think that's a little bit less of that because there's like so many platforms and like. But if you don't have your own audience, those numbers don't mean anything anyway. So. Right. It's no definitely tough. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's it's a challenge. I. I I've gotten lucky. I've, I've been able to interview uh, a few big names. Um, I have a Caviston in my back pocket to uh, connect me to you. Um, but I've uh, I've gotten lucky with uh, uh, Everclear and um, you know Breaking Benjamin and the Verve Pipe and, and shit like that. <clears throat> um, but they've asked for numbers, and I don't know if they don't care or if the numbers were decent, but I mean, it's just, I, I hate getting caught up in the numbers because and maybe it's because they're not great or I don't think they're great, but maybe they're not bad. I don't know. It's, it's such a weird game, you know, talking numbers, yeah, and, you know, views and it's, it's miserable. followers. And it's like, yeah. you know, I, I trying to gain subscribers on YouTube is forget it for me. I don't know. Yeah. Very hard. But I I've gotten lucky. I've gone viral on a couple of different platforms. Um, so like, whatever. I've like, not vi- like not massively viral, but like my YouTube. I'm at like five thousand on YouTube, which is like pretty good for nobody, you know. And you know, whatever, fifteen thousand on Facebook, which is good for a nobody. Um, but you know, I'd like to I'd like to be. I'd like to have a draw. I'd like to be able to play wherever I want to play. That'd be fucking sweet. Sure. Right now, but. Well, so yeah, what's your, what's your goal? What's your, what's, what's your plan? What's your, what do you want to do? Like, where do you see this going? Well, those are, those are very different questions. Those are three completely different questions. Okay. What's my goal? What my plan? And what do I want to do? Yeah. What do I want to do? Do I comedy, right? Enough. What? You want to do comedy. I want to do comedy. 
I want to be big enough that I can be on tour for most of the year and I can have all my friends come out always. So I can be like, you know, Abby Washuda or Bennett Hoffman or Mike Dubin or non-comics like Mike Dubin or uh, Rich Cachillon. I'd be like, hey guys, whenever, you, here's my schedule, come out whenever. There's a, I'll make room on the bus for you. Come out whenever for however long and just have different people come hang when they can hang and just always be surrounded by my friends and just do comedy. That's what I want to do. Okay. Uh, what's my goal? I guess that's a similar question, right? I want to I want to get that big. I want to get big enough that I can do that. And the plan is, you know, do comedy, <laughs> get work, get as much work as I can, try and get seen by, by as many people as I can. You know, uh, I guess a couple of band tours are going to help. Uh, I'm doing that adjacent festival in May. Um, it's like Blink-182 and Paramore and Japanese Breakfast. and So that, you know, that'll Wait, be nice. What be are comedy. you doing there? What are you, what are you doing as part of that? Comedy? Okay. I don't know. I'm on the flyer. I don't know. That's that's interesting. That. That's cool. Yeah, after that, I don't know what what we're doing. Yeah, you know? I don't know if I'm introducing bands or if I'm curating a stage or I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah. I'm on the flyer, which is huge. So. You mentioned that you stopped know. doing the podcasts, um, and I feel like a lot of comedians have podcasts in order to reach out to and and, and you know kind of appeal to a bigger audience and, and kind of pull them back into maybe the, the comedy. And you said you stopped doing that. Why, why is that? A couple of reasons. I wasn't, I don't have the uh, mental bandwidth at the moment to like do something that like looks the way they want it to look. And that's consistent and uh, I travel too much, mm. so I, you know I'd have to I'd have to have some wacky recording schedule, and I'm in the middle of nowhere, really. I mean, as much as I'm like Oklahoma City rules, yeah, Oklahoma City rules, but like no one's coming here to be a guest on my podcast, yeah, because in tight and uh, I don't know, I just felt like it was too much. It was like too much work. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like one of them um, was uh, an important one in that it was it, it kind of touched on mental mental health. Yeah, um, yeah. But then even that got felt old. Like that felt like oh, I'm just fucking once a week. I'm complaining about right. fucking you know boohoo. Knock it <laughs> off. Yeah, that's why Cavus stopped his cry about a podcast. <laughs> Tired of crying. Tired of crying. A lot of crying. A lot of crying. Life's hard, man. Life is hard. Life is hard, man. And I, you know, you should be allowed to leave if you want. <laughs> Forever? Yeah, they don't let you. They wow. say, uh, uh, they say, what are your friends going to think? My God, they're gonna miss me for two weeks, and they're gonna get on with their fucking lives. <laughs> I'll talk about Trump being back on Twitter, or yeah, you know, uh, exactly. you know I, mean? yeah. I tell yeah. people all the time, like no matter how much, no matter how much someone loves you, they'll get over it. <laughs> they'll fucking get over it. It's a sad truth. It's a sad truth, but it's like I gotta like if. If someone if someone's having a hard time, they have to continue to have a hard fucking time because you're gonna miss them. Fuck you. If that person's having a hard time and they want out, let them out. That's fair. I guess they guilt people into like, oh, you took the easy way out or you addressed the easy problems. Way. 
Well, that's, I mean, that's what people say. That's what, that's, that's, that's what the selfish people say. I guess you could say like, you know, how, how dare you do this to, you know, whoever uh, it might be. Um, that's what you're saying for sure. I think it's, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a hard decision to make. And I don't think people make it lightly. And I think people who shit on it aren't giving it uh, a fair look. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very fortunate that, that my life has not been so hard that I've ever contemplated that. Like I, to the point where I'm like, I can't imagine what that person was going through that that was their like last resort. Like that's crazy and sad. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't know, man. I don't look at it like that. I just, no? cause there's like a, some people just are in pain. Like they're just. Right. But what I'm saying is like, I can't like, I'm so thankful that I have not experienced that kind it, of pain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's not like, it's not like hardship. It's not like, like you could be like rich and famous and be in pain. You could right. be, you know what I mean? Like sure. anything. Yeah. I get it. You know, that's, that's the thing that I think people don't really understand. It's like this person's like living in utter anguish, like just cause it's not like a visible thing or a tangible thing. Like, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Like I, I'm just glad I never had to experience any of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's you know? great. That, yeah. You know. Um, and I think it's, I think it's more the norm now is people, people are living through like traumatic experiences and they're, they're feeling these kinds of ways now. And it's like, and we still have this like archaic attitude where it's like, Oh well, if you do that, you are, uh, you know, you're making so many people upset. It's like, all right, well then they can kill themselves too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's hard. I, don't know. I get it. I don't know. And I don't, I don't know. I don't view it as like this tragic thing. I view it as this like almost cathartic like right when it's time to go like let me just fucking pack my bags and go like why are we i gotta I, fucking i gotta die of cancer at 92 i gotta fucking i gotta have vertigo and forget all my memories i have that has to be the way i die right i can't just fucking drive out to tennessee river and fucking walk into the you know put a yeah. bunch of rocks in my pocket you know like <laughs> i gotta fucking I, I got to die the way you want me to die and penniless and in debt to the hospital. All right. I appreciate All the right. point of view. I, that, I, I appreciate that perspective. I do. You're absolutely right. <laughs> who are we, who are we to judge? Who are we to tell? Who, who are we to judge? Right. Who are we to judge? Uh, you know, people, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Cause I watched like, did you watch, did you watch walking dead last night? Finale. Wow, you know, I'm I'm so sad about it because I I started watching that uh, I started watching late, but I got all caught up, and I want to say like 2013 or 2014, or maybe even late. I forget what it was, but like I'm just like uh, I'm just done with this. It just it was just too long. I'm like just end yeah. it. Yeah, just end and I, it. so when I heard it was like last night. I'm like, part of me was like sad that I had so much time invested into it, and I gave up on it, not to see the end of it, but also like. I was just over it, you know, like there's one scene. It's not important. There's one scene where Daryl's carrying a girl that had just gotten shot and people are like literally sacrificing their lives for him to get this girl that is most certainly dying to the hospital area to save her. It's like, no, she's dead. Leave her. Let's go. Like, why are we? And it's just that's just such a metaphor for fucking like, let the fucking girl go. Yeah. Like, she's dead. It's cool. Like, everyone dies eventually. She died now. Let's fucking go. Why do we all have to fucking suffer? Because she fucking. So was that think, was that in the finale? Yeah. That sounds like that sounds was. like every episode that I watched when I was actually watching it. Like 10 it's years every ago. episode. 
<laughs> just I didn't get how it was still going. I don't get it either. It ends the same way it always. Everyone's now we have new cities and yeah, a new yeah. bad guy. Now there's no bad guy. Oh. I don't know how they kept it going for so long. And there's going to be like nine more shows. Great. There's a Michonne and Rick spinoff. Sure, why not? There's a Daryl spinoff. I don't know if it's like a movie or a, or a series. But then the series is definitely fear is still going on. And okay. there's going to be Dead City, which is like Negan and Maggie go to New York City. Okay. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't I'm a very simple guy when it comes to watching TV. I like it's always sunny. Yeah. Uh, you know, stuff I don't have to think about too much anymore. It, it, you know what? Listen, if Maggie and Negan can go to New York City <laughs> for a new Walking Dead spinoff, anyone who wants to kill themselves should be allowed to kill themselves. <laughs> 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 Listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's yeah. fine, guys. Yeah. We can it's all good. We can wrap it up now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wrap it on that. <laughs> Where can people find you on social media? I mean, I'm sure you have, I mean, you have a schedule. You have a uh, dates booked out for. I mean, you already told us about March and in, in, uh, Wilkesbury. Yeah. Geez. Uh, let me try. Uh, can I quickly? Uh, ramble yeah, do through it. This. Yeah, go through it. I want to yeah, hear. So yeah, you can find me um, at Neil Rubenstein on uh, on all the. It's either at Neil Rubenstein or it's Neil Rubenstein on something. So TikTok is it's Neil Rubenstein. YouTube it's Neil Rubenstein and it's Neil Rubenstein. Facebook it's it's Neil Rubenstein. Instagram it's just Neil Rubenstein. Uh, <laughs> as if that wasn't complicated enough but you can also like linktree.com near rubenstein or patreon.com near rubenstein or near rubenstein.com you can get all the stuff so just near rubenstein you'll find me just google me you'll find me uh when's this out in december it'll be early yeah i i have uh i record these in advance just because and okay, so, now i'm trying to like get some stuff done for the holidays but you're thinking i'm thinking uh it's kind of Probably it's probably gonna be the first or second week of December. Of December, okay. So we'll just start the new year. I'm gonna be in L.A., Houston, Nashville, Dayton, Indianapolis, uh, New York City in March, Wilkes Bar in March and April, North Carolina in April, Austin in May, Atlantic City at Jason Fest Live Nation at the end of May, uh, and like I mean I'm gonna be. In as many places as possible uh, throughout throughout 2023. Nice. So yeah, well, sounds if, like it's yeah. If you live somewhere, time. I'll be there. You know, so that's sweet. I gotta put this uh, March date in my uh, calendar. Here. Yeah, three thirty one and four one is at uh, Wise Crackers in Wilkesburg. You're doing two shows. Yeah, I'll do Friday and Saturday. That's fucking sweet. Awesome. All right. And. Uh, yeah. Did you get your tickets to see Taylor Swift? No. No? Man. Neither did it's half big, of America. Big complication. I hope she brings that. down Ticketmaster. Yeah, that's what they said about, uh, who do you call it? Pearl Jam, remember? No, I don't remember. Pearl Jam was going to take down Ticketmaster in the mid-90s, and that didn't happen. That'd be sweet, though. Yeah, it'd be sweet. but I, I wish they'd take down the internet. Totally, completely. I mean, then it's a pretty valuable blessing and a curse. Is what I always say. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I like it for its things. Yeah, of course. But remember the simpler time where, like, you advertised on the radio or the TV or a billboard. You see your you see your face up in the big lights on the billboard. Or, you know, you saw it, uh, I don't know, name some other, like, like a show flyer or some shit like that. Now it's like, and there's like, there's like a foot. Then you did like your radio tour, like you would get booked, like, oh, you're doing Howard Stern here, you're doing Opie and Anthony here, or whatever you're doing. Like, you're just doing these, you know, the radio tour and just promoting your, you know, show or your album or whatever it might be. Now it's like you're dancing on TikTok, you're, 
or you're, you know, whatever you're doing on TikTok and you're, you know, I worry about YouTube and how many followers do I have on Instagram and Facebook and so much. It's a lot. It's brutal. It's brutal. And, uh, I mean, at the same time though, like, well, it's a lot of different ways you can get famous now. You don't have to just wait for Carson to call you. Also true. Like I said, blessing and a curse. I love it. I mean, I don't know what we done. We would have done during the pandemic if we couldn't order groceries and have them delivered to the ho- the house. You know, would have uh, we starved. We just uh, got uh, all gotten smallpox, like yeah. uh, like a bunch of uh, Native Americans. Yeah, I don't have a freezer full of uh, deer meat that I'm going to live off of. I'm yeah. We would have all had to go to Rogan's, right? Now, are you not a Rogan fan because of Joe Rogan, or you just don't like his comedy? Oh, no, I don't give a shit. Uh, I just never really got into his comedy. Gotcha. Um, yeah, like, I don't. I got you. I was just curious. Like, I like if he was group. like, hey, you want to be on the show? I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. That would, mm-hmm. that's your goal. Go on Rogan. You go, Shh. Rocket to the sky. Or. Tank, <laughs> or that, yeah, <laughs> or that. Take you your like, chances. Take your chances. Yeah, he's like, oh, I heard you tour some big bands, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> he's like, all right, get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no deal. Taking back Sunday, and which is who I know. But I like his whole crew. I got Segura, and then uh, Burt Kreischer. Segura is a killer comic. I'm not, I'm not a huge uh, Burt Kreischer fan. I like him as a person, like, from what I know of him, anyways. Um, his comedy has not really done it for me, but uh, yeah. Segura is funny. Ari Shafir, like we said, is is great. I think yeah, Segura is funny. Oh, I think Shafir is a craftsman. Like it, it's uh, Shafir's on another level. It's yeah. not. Uh, he's doing he's doing the stand up that I want to do. Okay. He's doing thoughtful, thought-provoking, deep dives. That's what I want. That's what I would like to do. Not like, I mean, whatever. Sarah is a good example of that too, where it's like she's alternating between fart jokes and uh, political statements. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I think you're in it at a good time. You know, they were saying that that group, the Rogan and the the Shafir, and they're saying that comedy is dangerous again. <laughs> okay. Which is cool. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get. I don't know, man. Yeah. I I don't know, man. I feel like people like I've never. I don't know. People are like, oh, you can't say this. You can't say this. I say whatever the fuck I want to say, and I don't get any. I don't know. No one's. So it'll be like, ah, oh, I don't mind. Well, yeah, well, I think what they meant is it's dangerous in that, like, you have to worry about it, but you're, you, can, you can obviously say, like, you're saying, like, fuck that, like, just do what you want to do yeah. and say what you want to say. And there's kind of like a, an appeal to that, like, people yeah. who don't want to be, you know, censored and don't give a shit. And, like, if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. And I'm, I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I guess is I mean, whatever. I guess I'm coming from, like a like, a privileged place where it's, like, I don't know, man. If I'm standing on stage, no one's like, no one's first thought is like, I'm going to jump up on stage and fucking smack that guy. <laughs> They're like, I'm going to jump off. No, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll talk to him later in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think people are coming after you. You're not, you're not, a, you're not a small man. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's an MMA guy who's like, I'll fucking kill it. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, you will probably. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Neil, I don't want to take any more of your time. It's late. Uh, I don't know what time it is where you are. Was you two hours behind me? I'm an I'm an hour, I think. Yeah, an hour. I'm okay. central. Yeah, it's crazy how like it's like I feel like Eastern is like so much of the country, and then Central is like most of the rest of the country, and then Mountain is like one town, <laughs> yeah, and then just the West Coast. Yeah, and no one cares about the West Coast. They don't care. <laughs> no one cares. No, you, you, we're going on New York time. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. No, thanks for doing it. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'll, uh, this will come out early December. I'll tag you. I'll send yeah. You let me message. know. Let me know. And I'll post it around. And I'll Goes on. share with all my, all my 45 viewers. No, uh, no, no, no. But you know, it was a pleasure meeting you back in September at the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, thinking of me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. appreciate your time. And, uh, uh, I love the stuff you've been a part of, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you uh, in April or on a, or March 31st or April 1st. I feel like I have to go to the April 1st show, you know, April Fool's Day, you know, like the whole like jokes, you know, right? The whole vibe. I think we might. Yeah, we might make that a little bit more of a party. Plus, that, there'll be a big post show hang after that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, what I mean, like, do you hang out with your the the, the audience? Like, do you say, "Hey, hey, we're going to," you know, uh, the I mean, bar I, or the casino, or it depends on the audience. Or do you kind of keep it with your inner circle? Yeah, I keep them inner circle. But I like, if you come out, hang. Oh, buddy, so, I'm in. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I'll maybe it'll, it'll be decided on what night I can get a babysitter. Okay. All right. But if you're saying. If you're saying April first is the night to go, April first, I think is gonna be that is gonna be the hang, hang. night. All right, because none of us will have work the next day. Right, I, I see, I see. So should I have my people call your people or what? Yeah, yeah. have Caviston text me. All right, <laughs> Caviston. Well, I, I I have your in messenger now, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, you. man. Keep in touch. Yeah, for sure. All the stuff. Thanks so cool. much, man. Thank you, man. I'll see you soon. All right, take it easy. All right, later. Not